Here's how a standard unloaded dual cab ute stops going 80 k's an hour. And here's how a fully loaded dual cab with bigger tyres and all the gear stops doing the same speed. I've got to tell you, that was a real eye-opener. Imagine those cones had been an animal, another vehicle, or heaven forbid, even worse. You know, we as four-wheel drivers, we're constantly upgrading everything on our truck. We're putting bar work, rooftop tents. You know, we've got 12-volt system, extra batteries. We've got water tanks, bigger fuel tanks. You add all that up, and it's nothing for us to put an extra 500 kilo on top of a four-wheel drive, and that's before you've got all your camping gear in it. All dual-cab utes have brakes that'll work well when your vehicle is stocked. But add all that weight on and bigger tyres, and every one of them will take a lot longer to stop. Many of us squeeze more power out of our engines too, but why does no one think to upgrade their brakes? I'm here today to show you how brakes work, and why your brakes probably don't work as well as they should, and a solution to make sure you stop when you need to. It's the one thing that'll save you from serious accidents and injuries, and none of us think to upgrade them. We're changing that today. As you saw before, we got a stock D-Max and did a braking test at 80 kilometres an hour. After several runs, the average braking distance was 42.5 metres. We marked this distance with cones on the track. However, as you know, I've done quite a few modifications to the back of the D-Max. Quite a bit more weight up here and of course, bigger tyres. Now, let me explain it like this. Bigger tyres make it a lot harder to stop. Think of a skateboard wheel spinning as fast as it possibly can versus a 31-inch mud drain tyre spinning as fast as it possibly can. The bigger tyre is gonna take a considerable amount more force to stop. Secondly, I've added bar work. A full-size canopy, I've got a 12-volt system, I've got a battery, a fridge, plus all my camping gear. All that would weigh around 500 kilograms plus. I bet plenty of you would be surprised just how much weight you've added with all the accessories you've fitted. With standard brakes travelling at the same speed, you can see I smashed the cone and stopped over 14 metres later than the standard four-wheel drive. To put things into perspective, a standard D-Max has one of the best factory braking systems on the market. Now, I'm using my D-Max for this test because it's what I drive every day. But what you can take away from this is many dual cab utes will have worse stopping distances than this when fully loaded. Oh. What do we get? We had about 57 metres or My so. My speed was about right? Yep. Yeah, good speed, 78. 80 kilometres an hour. If that had been another vehicle, kangaroo, you can see what'll happen. Clearly weight makes a huge difference with braking. Now we're gonna show you why and how to fix this problem. Brakes work by using friction between the pad and the disc or rotor to slow down the speed the wheel is spinning. Imagine pushing a bit of wood across sandpaper compared to a sheet of glass. More friction means it's harder for the wheel to spin, meaning it'll stop faster. Your front brakes are essentially made up of three components to help this happen. The rotor is attached to the hub and is spinning as fast as your wheel is. A caliper is this bit here, and when you press the brake pedal, it closes so the brake pad comes in contact with the rotor. Of course, the harder you push the pedal, the more clamping force is provided by the caliper. The brake pad is what provides the friction. It's made up of a compound that is like heavy duty sandpaper. It has the friction when it comes in contact with the rotor, which slows down the vehicle. If you own a modified four-wheel drive, carrying extra weight like I do, your standard brakes just won't stop you well enough. And here's why. The more mass you have, the more friction and clamping force you need to stop your four-wheel drive. Which basically means you need to push down the pedal harder to stop quicker. You can only push down so hard though. In an emergency situation when you need to slam on the brakes, there's nothing that'll help you pull up as quickly or in the same distance as you would in a standard dual cab unit. The other problem with standard brakes is the brake lines. All vehicles come with rubber lines like these here that deliver brake fluid under heavy pressure to clamp the caliper down. The problem with rubber is it's stretchy. Under pressure, the rubber can expand, which means energy and pressure is not as effective and not being used to push the calipers in. Another big problem we face is not just decreased braking distance in a modified four-wheel drive, it's brake failure when you have to brake heavily a number of times. Think of coming down a very steep hill or doing the same thing while towing. Third test, I think this one might be. Again, building up to 80. What I'm finding now, what I'm, what I'm really starting to feel now, is those brakes starting to fade on me. First stopping point was around about 50 metres. Let's see how we go now. Roughly coming up to 80 now, coming up to 80. Oh, this is intimidating. 80, hard on the anchors. Hard 
on the anchors. There goes the. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you calling that? That's a fraction over 60. 60 metres at 80 kilometres an hour. We started at 50, roughly. That's right. That's some serious brake fade, folks. Now, the only way to stop better if you're towing or carrying heavy loads like I am is to do what we're doing right now, upgrade your brakes. You might be at home wondering, why can't I just put in upgraded brake pads? Brake pads will add extra friction. However, that extra friction means more heat and your standard rotor won't be able to handle it and will wear unevenly and sometimes warp, causing steering vibration. To truly get better braking, you need to upgrade the rotor, the pads and the brake lines. Let's show you how and then we'll show you the real life way they improve braking. Folks, this right here, it's the ultimate brake upgrade kit from Bendix Brakes. Comes with upgraded rotors, you've got pads, brake lines and a few other bits and pieces here just to make the install that little bit easier. Now, Bendix recommend this kit to anyone who are carrying heavy loads or towing. And here's where the fun starts. I get to fit this to my D-Max today and spend the whole day testing it to see if it really works. Let's get stuck into it. Okie dokie. New brakes, same vehicle, same street. Let's go test it again. There we go, that's about right there. And Struth. That's how you brake. <laughs> You'll see the Bendix brakes pulled up my D-Max 14 metres earlier than the standard brakes. Anybody with a fully loaded four-wheel drive needs to do this. You can see that the new brake setup has brought the D-Max back to how it used to stop before the mods. If not, a little bit better. Well, I've got to say, I am bloody impressed with that. But there's plenty of variables that come into play with a test like this. So we're back at Bendix HQ where they have a full brake dyno that we can do a controlled test on to show the difference between a standard brake system and the upgraded kit. Bendix designs, engineers tests and manufactures most of their products right here in Ballarat. Their brake dyno can test heat, friction, wear life, noise and more. Watch this. This is what happens when your brakes get to 600 degrees. This would only happen on some of the most extreme racetracks in the world. However, what blew me away was that our brakes can get over 300 degrees in really serious conditions, like towing down a long steep hill. We're here with Ian. Now, Ian is a brake guru, and he's gonna talk us through exactly what this dyno does. Okay, so here we are in the Bendix dyno room, and uh, what we like about the dyno is it's 100% repeatable. So we've just done some testing today. Uh, we've just um, seen uh, the brake temperature get up to just shy of 600 degrees. But the best thing we like about using the dyno is that we can uh, repeat the process. So uh, we can take any brake program, uh, any uh, rotor pad combination, and we can simulate a whole bunch of different conditions. So what we saw before was uh, was a racetrack condition, um, but we can simulate hills, we can simulate long driving, do all sorts of things, and then come back and repeat it again and again and again. So at Bendix, uh, what the dyno does is allows us to test to the extreme. So for four-wheel drives and for towing and for heavy loads and for your upgrades, uh, we can provide you with the best possible brakes. Okay, let's start right here with the rotor. They've kept it the exact same dimension, size as the OE rotor. Why is that important? Well, think about it. If you're out bush somewhere remote, you break something, you need parts, you can just get OE parts. You don't need to go chasing some fancy part. Also, they've made this one here out of a better metal composition. So it's stronger, lasts longer, and it doesn't warp, which is important if you're gonna go through cold river crossings. Now, you see this opening here? As the wheel spins, cold air gets sucked through here and pushes the hot air out the top. This makes the rotor cooler, meaning you can add more friction to stop it faster. All rotors have this, but Bendix have come up with their own fin design in here that means the cold air touches more brake surface, meaning it'll cool quicker. That allows you to use higher friction pads. You've probably seen these notches and these dimples here in brake rotors before. Maybe you didn't know what they mean or what they do. Well, this is the reason for them. When braking hard, heat causes gases to form from the compound in the pads. On a flat rotor, they get caught between the pad, which can prevent higher levels of friction. It's a bit like the puck on an air hockey table. It's a barrier that affects braking performance. These X dimples here help the gas escape. They also help with keeping the pad and rotor clean, 
and clears mud and water off the rotor when four wheel driving. So now we've got a rotor that is stronger and able to be cooled down quicker. That means we can add more friction to stop your four wheel drive better. And that's where this bad boy comes in. Some pads out there, often found in European cars, were made from a compound that worked well, but they created heaps of dust. Others didn't create dust, but were really noisy. Because Bendix can fast track the design and engineering process here in Australia, they've created a brake pad that's built of a ceramic compound that adds a heap of friction and doesn't create as much annoying dust and noise. They've also got this unique retention plate that uses proven technology from truck brakes. The pad is molded onto this rough side here, which adds structure to the pad. Kind of like putting Rio in concrete so it doesn't break apart. In heavy braking conditions, cheap pads have been known to come off the backing plate. This ensures it won't happen. Now you see this blue stripe here on the brake pad? That is titanium. It's a very coarse metal and it increases friction. Now Bendix do that so that when you replace your brake pads, you don't have to bed them in like you normally would have had to do. Pop them in and drive normally. The titanium strip gives you grip from the start, whilst taking any impurities off the rotor to ensure you have smooth braking. Here's why all four-wheel drivers need braided brake lines. Firstly, they're more bush-proof for four-wheel drivers and won't be as prone to damage by a tree root or rock. Secondly, they don't flex and expand like rubber ones, meaning 100% of the brake fluid goes straight to the caliper, giving you better force, more control and smoother braking. Look, it doesn't matter what dual cab ute you own, if you've modified it in any way like I have with my D-Max, you really do owe it to yourself to do a brake upgrade kit like this one here from Bendix. It makes a huge difference. And a kit like this might just save a life, and we reckon that is priceless. Bendix make the ultimate four-wheel drive brake upgrade kit for most common dual cabs and are creating more models all the time. They come with everything you need to replace them, and I reckon for the benefit they provide, they're incredibly affordable. Much more than some other brake upgrades out there. Listen folks, if you've got any questions whatsoever about brakes, well, we've got the leading industry experts right here at Bendix, so please put your questions in the comments below and the guys will answer them as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you next time.